Uh, uh, Les so um, I just first of all want to welcome the, the opportunity this week, I think, to hear directly from Michel Barnier, uh, the chief negotiator of the task force uh, for the preparation con conduct of negotiations with the UK. Um, last month I, uh, I spoke again, I think, about the need for Ireland, I, I believe, to have direct representation at Brexit negotiations due to the enormous uh, impact of the UK's withdrawal from the European Union on ourselves, uh, on the north-south relationship first and foremost, and indeed on the east-west relationship as well in relation to trade, um, our trade and business. Um, I, I'd, I'd also, last can, been calling all along, I think, for a dedicated Brexit minister, uh, but we were assured by the T-ship because he was best placed at the European Council uh, to act as the, as the Brexit Minister, uh, but now of course uh, it seems that um, he won't be the, the Brexit Minister um, for, for very much longer. Um, but I think uh, concerns do, do remain, for example, um, uh, I notice on page 17 of the um, uh, of the, uh, the government's um, our, uh, document, Ireland and the negotiations on the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. Uh, it refers um, to the heads of state uh, or government of the EU. Uh, they agreed that the European Council will be permanently seized of the negotiations. But uh, again, I wonder if the Taoiseach and the Minister uh, can clarify what, what exactly does that mean? Uh, does it mean that we'll be informed on a daily, hourly basis of, of what's happening in negotiations? Um, and uh, it stresses again that Ireland will be actively involved, engaged in all the negotiating steps and the, the Taoiseach uh, will be centrally involved. Uh, but um, again, again, it seems that uh, the Cabinet Committee on Brexit and the other arrangements we've had, uh, they're, they're very far from having a direct representation for this country, I think, at, at, ne at the negotiations themselves. And perhaps that's something, Michel, Mr. Uh, Barnier, we can, um, we can raise again on Thursday. Um, I note also that the April 29th European Union negotiating guidelines uh, that they will be updated by the European Council, and I quote, as required. Um, and uh, I mean, what does that mean, as required? I mean, uh, what kind of changes uh, might be envisaged in, the, in that regard? Uh, I welcome the fact, obviously, that the initial uh, reaction of uh, Chancellor Merkel and others to the structure of the negotiations, uh, that the divorce had to take place uh, totally separately. And then the future relationship with the UK, that that's been abandoned, um, and that, fra that phrase that has entered in, that once sufficient progress is made um, in, in the discussions on the separation, uh, that in par parallel discussions on the shape of the future relationship will begin. Uh, I, I, I think that the, uh, that's, that's very important, and also the, the commitment to a close partnership uh, between the UK um, and uh, the European uh, Union. Uh, but there remain, of course, um, issues of of, of uh, grave uh, concern. Uh, indeed, in recent months, I think, last can, there have been ominous and concerning signs for Irish business and the economy. Uh, reports, for example, from the hoteliers and guest houses, certainly in the Dublin region, uh, that the number of British uh, tourists are significantly down, uh, significant decline in the sale of, of uh, new and used cars, with significant rise in the number of used cars being imported from the UK and the North. Uh, the uh, slowdown in the UK economy in quarter one, just before the election was called, uh, and, and uh, given it the importance of the UK economy to our business, uh, that, that's very significant. Uh, and recent estimates, of course, by the, uh, the an economist in the central bank of the 40, up to 40,000 job losses from a hard Brexit uh, um, by, by the, uh, if the UK goes that route. And of course, uh, uh, Prime Minister May's election for uh, forthcoming election on June the 8th uh, may bring further grave volatility to the negotiating process. And tragically, uh, the election programme of the, uh, of the uh, Tory government uh, seems to be uh, predicated on uh, working towards a hard Brexit. So I think we have to hope that um, a disastrous continuation of Tory administration uh, won't go on uh, after, um, after June the 8th and that the Labour Party uh, and indeed other parties might be in a position uh, to, uh, to, um, to lead uh, Britain in a, a much better Brexit negotiation. Uh, so uh, just a final point I wanted to make, uh, uh, last can in the time available, uh, in relation to the European Union budget, of course. Um, uh, a lot of discussion about the final UK divorce bill, whether it's 20 billion or 60 billion, uh, but the UK does contribute something like 
10 billion a year, and uh, we have to be very vigilant to ensure that um, our contribution, and we're now net contributors like the UK uh, to the European Union, uh, that it won't um, uh, have a very bad uh, negative impact on us. Uh, so, uh, with those few comments, uh, last can I'll just uh, con conclude. Thanks, Jack.